Hey, good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Today's Restaurant News Chapter 1 Networking Group. We are a group of restaurant vendors who are here to help each other grow our businesses and to also help any restaurant owner, manager, or chef if they have a problem or an issue that they feel they need help with. We're here to try to help. We've got hundreds of years of experience uh, with people who are members of this group. And if you'd like to reach us, give us a call at 561-620-8888 or go to our website, trnusa.com, and also check out our YouTube page, which is Today's Restaurant, and subscribe and give us a like so that we can expand what we're doing. So, uh, good morning, everybody. I want to introduce to, well, let's just start with a brand new face, which is uh, Michael. Hello. Uh, Michael Jacobs. And Michael is yes. a restaurant equipment dealer. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Michael? And what, uh, what I'm going to well, do is I'm going to ask you to you know give us what who you are and what you do, and then we'll go our intros, and I'll double back so that you can add on whatever you might have yep. if of you course. see what we do. Okay, so tell well, us. Um, my name is Michael Jacobs. I live in uh, Delray Beach. I uh, work at a Boynton Beach. I uh, sell commercial stainless steel kitchen equipment. I import uh, my own brand, but I also am a brand distributor for all types of equipment. So I can help um, I can help you with uh, your bars, your restaurants, all the parts of the kitchen. I know a lot of contacts, so I could help you. I could help everybody by providing um, names of other businesses or, or services that uh, might be needed. So I hope that I could be useful for you guys. And, and vice versa. We, we, uh, Absolutely. You know, you, yep. the beauty of the network is when you're looking at the board, you look at everybody yep. on the board, there's, yep. you know, 100 people behind them that they know. So, yep, uh, for sure. So welcome, welcome, and uh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I look I'm, forward to uh, learning more about everybody. I'm excited to have you here because, uh, as I don't know if everybody knows, I used to be a dealer. So Michael and I have a lot in common. Yep, yep. So that's pretty. That would be cool to go over some stories. Right. <laughs> we, we can get. We're gonna get together and, sh and, and share war stories about deliveries that didn't fit in through the door or something like that. Uh, you know? That that definitely a, that's definitely one of those. That's definitely a common issue that ha happens from time to time. <laughs> All right, and the other Michael. new face on the board, not a new company. Well, yeah, a new company. Uh, John Zaza, <clears throat> welcome, John. Thank you. Yeah, great to meet everybody. Uh, this is, brings back a lot of memories, Terry. The last time you and I saw each other, we were eating nacho chips at Chili's. That's how far back. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's how far yeah, back we go. Right. So my name is John Zaza. Yeah, I uh, I live in Delray Beach. So Michael, you and I should hook up. Uh, yeah, I might be able to help you, buddy. Uh, yeah, I work. Cool. I'm on the call today with one of my clients. I work with on a consultancy uh, basis with a lot of different <coughs> hospitality service providers. I've uh, been about 12 years now. Uh, I live in Delray Beach, like I said, and primarily in the state of Florida. I've been working uh, uh, not only in the Tri County area but around the state. I'm a, I'm involved and sat on the board of directors. If you both. For three years, I sat on the board of directors with the Florida Restaurant Lodging Association in Broward County chapter and got to know a lot of the uh, FRLA people around the state. Uh, and again, I work with uh, different service providers. I brought a kitchen exhaust cleaning company into the state of Florida years ago, a janitorial company, I work with fire support <coughs> companies. Right now, I'm on the call as for, on behalf of Servi, which is one of my clients. They're an ordering platform for restaurants, bars, hotels, uh, example, yesterday we put a, a, a board of directors presentation on uh, down in the FRLA Broward County chapter and I have three beach hotels. It's perfect for beach, beach hotels, pools, restaurants. It's an ordering platform. You go into a restaurant, you sit down and there's a bar, there's a, a barcode, not a barcode, a uh, uh, QR. QR, code, QR code on the table. You scan it with your phone and then uh, everything else is taken care of. You order, you pay and restaurants are loving it. The technology is going this way especially with their staffing problems. And uh, yeah, so Michael, you and I should hook up. Like I said, we're both sure. 
anything I can do yep. for anybody else. Again, I, I, I work with a lot of restaurant chains, either regional, national. I've, I've dealt with them. I have worked with them. Uh, so uh, a lot of hotels, a lot of different property management companies. So I'm here to help uh, any way I can. Thanks, everybody. Uh, great. Uh, thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, we, as, as somebody mentioned earlier, uh, yesterday, uh, I had lunch with Jeff and Jason and John and Sal, who's the founder of Servi. He was right. here from Nashville. We had a very interesting lunch. I learned a lot. I, I said, of course, if you get them. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, you know, it was, it was like a four hour meeting, but it was, I learned a lot about Servi. And uh, that's one of the functions of this group is to put people together who can do business together, you know, within the group as well. So that, uh, that worked out really well. And I, something happened there. I want to discuss afterwards. But. Uh, now that wasn't, that wasn't four hour meeting at a bar, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Was the bar was about 10 feet from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we didn't drink. We didn't drink. That's right. That's true. That's right. We didn't drink. <laughs> well, it was Thursday, you know, and I'm saying start early. If, if if I could just real quickly, Howard, if you don't mind, if you're sitting in front of a computer and just just plug in, punch in G E T get dot S E R dot V I, and you'll see what survey is all about. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, uh, Sal had made a presentation here a couple of months ago and did a great job. He he knows, I mean, he started the company. He knows he knows what it do, what it does and the benefits. And th there's no question you can ask him that he can't answer. So, it's a great website. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I don't. All right, so what, you know, for the benefit of Michael and John, uh, I'm gonna. Suggest that we do the intros first, and let's start it off with Darren. Good morning, every good morning, everybody. Darren Gall, Tracy.net. Uh, we are a communications <laughs> consulting and solution provider. What does that mean? We help restaurants, uh, franchises in particular, to lower telco costs and have a unified platform across their locations. Uh, we do everything from small startups to large uh, chains and, and solutions. Uh, we truly dive into what the actual needs are and find the right product. Our main goal is to eliminate busy signals when people are calling in and making sure we give enough call pass so all your callers can get through to reach the restaurant. Uh, we also are now getting into POTS replacement lines. And for those of you who know what POTS is, it's not, not the stuff you smoke, but uh, it's plain old <laughs> telephone service. <laughs> and it's getting harder and harder to order analog lines, and they're starting to go up in price. I was actually meeting with someone uh, from California last week, and they're now paying close to $350 for an analog line at a location. That is absolutely insane. The going rate in Florida is anywhere between 59 and 99 to 129 a month for an analog line. We've come up with a way to do that over SIP with a proprietary uh, technology that we came up with with a company out of Canada, and it guarantees a call completion. It also gives you LTE backup, so if your internet ever goes down, those calls still go through. Complete with a 24 hour runtime. We call it our pots in a box service. So if you know anybody who has buildings with multiple analog lines, we can probably save them thousands of dollars a year with this technology. Uh, you can reach us online at traci.net. Our email is sales at traci.net. Our toll free is 800 881 8899. Great. Thank you. Darren, uh, I may have a lead for you. So if you want to touch base with me after the meeting. Sounds good. Thanks. Where, where are you based? We're out of Deerfield Beach. Uh, so, yeah, very local to you. I spend a lot of time in Delray. So, <laughs> be happy to get together. At which bar? <laughs> yeah, no, more restaurants and bars up there, to be honest. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Did someone say bar? Say again? Did someone say bar? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you tell it Friday. <laughs> You'd be proud, John, for Father's Day. I took my dad to an Irish uh, uh, restaurant down here called The Field. If you're ever down this way, it's an old farmhouse type <laughs> setting where they have different cottage type rooms. And uh, they, they have all the favorite Irish beers on tap and uh, pretty spectacular Irish food. Okay, great. Oh, how fun. Thatched roof. It actually does have a thatched roof, yes. It's the only thatched roof Irish pub in the U.S. Is it? Wow. Yep. I've okay, been so you're familiar with it then. Oh, uh, he's familiar with any bar. Where is it at? <laughs> it's right near the casino, actually, down. So it's it's off of Davy Road, uh, okay. right off the just east of the Turnpike. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, it's, well that's not Jericho Beach. No, 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 no. That's yeah, that's south. <laughs> that's well, down, down near the Hard Rock Casino. That's like, that's like Davy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. Is somebody sick or coughing or? Well, you must be me. I'm hearing a lot of coughing. No, no. I don't hear anything. No? I, I, I hear it. Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah. I don't hear it. Oh, we can I don't always hear it. Is it we you, can... Pam? No, and I don't hear it, but I'm on. I'm keep going back on mute. So I'm going. All right. That's okay. I, I hear. I Maybe hear it's it. a speaker thing. No, no. That's weird. Uh, let's you, move on. Let's yeah, move on I, to I, Terry Lena. I don't. I don't Good I morning, everyone. Terry Lena, workwear outfitters. We manufacture multiple lines of workwear. We recently launched our new culinary line that has oil block technology as well as airflow. We work with you from uh, providing a sample all the way to find you the right distributor. You could check us out at www.of.com. My contact is 720-244-4972. Thanks. Hey, thank you. John Mulholland and Chris Rodriguez. Yeah, good morning, folks. Um, Chris usually fills us in for in information. I'm just here like the, the dummy and the sidekick of the show. So go ahead, Chris. <laughs> so I want to talk about the really important news of the morning, the greatest college baseball game of all time last night, LSU Wake Forest. Anybody watch that game? No. Unbelievable. Top two pitchers in the country, 11 innings, walk off home run, LSU to go to College World Series. Ooh. Anyway, so we are right. strategic supply chain partners. We function as an outsourced purchasing department for our clients. Uh, we work on 100% contingency basis, meaning we only make money if we actually find savings for them. Uh, we typically generate between 8 and 15% reduction in their uh, costs through negotiating uh, improvements approved or enhanced distribution agreements with suppliers. Uh, we go manufacturer direct, negotiate deviated pricing, get that pricing put into their programs as well. Once we get the, the broadline distributor taken care of, then we get into their other uh, suppliers, produce companies. Uh, we can do linen companies, um, wear washing. Uh, we even have a client we're working with saving utilities on. We can pretty much touch any expense uh, except labor, we don't we don't do anything on the labor side uh, that hits a restaurant's uh, controllable cost. Uh, so again, strategic supply chain partners, uh, Howard and Terry send out all our contact information at the end of the meeting, including emails, website, et cetera. Yeah. John, want to anything? Yeah, we need a model. Yeah, well, I got the model. Like you to stand up. Where in the world is John? <laughs> <laughs> How tall? <laughs> Eat more by paying less or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> well, if I stand you up, know you what? Know, I looked good. at a client this morning that is buying chicken from Restaurant Depot. They're paying seven dollars a pound for chicken. What? Yeah. 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 I don't even pay that. No, and I got some that organic to Audi. product, whatever. But it's like, you know, we're going to save them so much money just negotiating a better deal. And, what we can I just ask you, Chris? How can they afford to pay seven dollars a pound? For, I, <laughs> if, are they too? It's, it's a premium, a because premium, honestly, the big premium, chicken. fresh, <laughs> organic chicken. 
I know, but you can get organic chicken for like four ninety nine, five ninety nine a pound. You know, it's a, as special, a it's a specialty product, but it's just an example of the kind of stuff we run into. All wow, so we're gonna we're gonna help these guys out. And uh, oh yeah, <laughs> John, as far as a uh, a motto, I don't know, man. I can come up with it. I'm that I'm in the yeah, average. Please, please, Dave. I'm I'm not a I'm 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 a nuts and bolts number cruncher analytics guy. I'm not a marketing guy, but because I'm okay. like my motto would be what's your problem? Anyway. <laughs> well, we'll, 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 run, we'll run the contest for you. You wouldn't get very far, Chris. <laughs> what's your motto? All right. Oh my gosh. How much time do you well, have? <laughs> moving on. Let's go to John Bunn. Good morning. He disappeared on me. There he is. Uh, good morning. No, my thing froze up here. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the new guys. Uh, my name is John Bunn. I'm with the BH Bunn Company. Uh, many of you may know us from up in the Northeast at all the different bakeries. We manufacture the only American-made string tying machine that ties bundles of just about anything you can think of. We're in bakeries. We're in uh, supermarkets and uh, uh, poultry plants. Um, processing plants to tie pork roast, beef roast, rotisserie chickens, laundries, printed material, newspapers, magazines, furniture, literally anything you can think of, we've tied it. We've exported yeah. since 1923. Uh, I'm third generation, have owned a company since 97. Uh, fourth generation is now uh, home from college, but he's in the engineering department helping me design a new machine that'll be more of a countertop design. Um, what we're trying to do is help customers that uh, have to get rid of the plastic bags, uh, especially in the restaurant industry and the pizza uh, market, because when you tie something with twine, it gives you an instant handle. It also gives you a level of security that nothing else can provide. Uh, the bun knot cannot be duplicated by hand. It's unique. It's different. It's been around for 117 years, and it's just new to this industry. Uh, as you can see, my phone number is 800-222-BUN. My email is info at buntyco.com. And my website is buntyco.com. Buntyco stands for Bun Tying Company. Nothing to do with Tyco. That name actually dates back to the 1930s, which was our old cable address, long before emails, texts, and the telex machines. If we can help you out, uh, we'd love to. Uh, you guys know a lot of the different restaurants, uh, equipment dealers. But we look for new distributors. Uh, and we can help save money. Uh, basically, your twine is like 0. 0.0002 of a cent per inch. So whatever they're tying, it's less than a plastic bag. Thank you all. Thanks for not stringing us along. <laughs> uh, now, here's you, a tagline uh, that we can well, actually get. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. Uh, We're the ultimate John, in bondage. We've been doing it longer than any. John. <laughs> John, this is Pamela. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Joni yesterday. Real quick, um, yes. I have a, a gentleman to introduce to, and I don't think I've connected you yet. Uh, Ken Schwinger over there at Bakery Concept. I know y'all are leaving for a few weeks. Have, have y'all have I connected y'all yet? Because he's calling on some of the same, uh, you know, manufacturers and uh, bread companies and stuff like that with some products. So uh, I'm going to send you an email if I haven't later today or after right. the call, introducing the two of you. And uh, I know you're leaving, so if you have to get back with him, but I think it would benefit him as well and, you know, be a good connection for you as well. I appreciate that. Good. I see That's Tyler fun. has joined us. So, Tyler, why don't you quickly tell us who you are, where you are, and what you do, and then uh, we'll double back after you do that to see if you left anything out. You say Tyler, is it me? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. So actually Pamela was the one that got me to join this meeting and I will, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be joining. That seems like uh, we're all in the same kind of uh, sector. Um, I am, my name is Tyler. I am with a company called SAP. And I don't know if anybody's ever heard of SAP or SAP before. Uh, we're software solutions. I designate in software solutions for uh, food and beverage companies, uh, food and beverage service companies. Um, basically, what I do is that I work with small to medium sized growing companies. So uh, people know SAP or SAP as like the company that or the software that Walmart uses or the um, or like Costco or Target uses. 
Uh, basically, what, what I do is that I work with small to medium-sized growing food and beverage companies managing their inventory, right? So if, they're, if they have different retail stores, if they have, uh, they have a wholesale distribution operation, I, I help companies with uh, software, um, uh, software platforms. So they manage all their inventory in one place, all their financials in one place, all their accounting, uh, sales, purchasing, materials, requirement planning. So, every, so all the employees in the company would be able to operate in one singular platform. Uh, it's the next step above QuickBooks is what I always say. So QuickBooks is very limited functionality. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have been work have worked with QuickBooks before in the past. Uh, basically, we it, it, and it's not only limited to food and beverage. It's anybody that needs control over their inventory, over their sales process. If they're selling online, they want to be able to see the supply chain in one singular place. So uh, it's an ERP, and I'm sure I'm sure um, everybody's here has probably heard of ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. But anyway, I've been working with uh, Pam for, um, I think, maybe about like two, uh, maybe about a month now. She's been working with my company for a while, but I, I'm, I'm a sales rep. I'm one of the only sales reps at my smaller company, which is Solera Tech. We do the SAP for uh, small to medium-sized grown food and beverage companies. So that's why I wanted to join. I want to learn more about the industry, uh, see if I can help out with uh, networking in any way as well. I work with, we work with tons of companies in the Miami data area. Um, that are growing food distribution companies, food manufacturing companies. I'm positioned right now. Currently, I'm in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but I, I'm just traveling. Um, I'm always in Miami. I'm in back and forth to Maryland. So I have a lot of connections uh, with uh, food and beverage, uh, mostly manufacturing, if not warehousing, distribution, um, anything that has to do with inventory. So that's that's where I come. So Good. it's very well, welcome. Well, welcome. You guys welcome. welcome aboard. Yes, welcome. Yeah, and you know, I thought just just a, just a note. I thought he might be a good introduction, also for um, you, Kevin, Chris, and John, for y'all. Maybe with some of your larger clients that have inventory and all that, you know, y'all might be calling on some of the same companies. So I thought, you know, yeah, I'll uh, I'll do an introduction email to to all of y'all um, with him as well. Um, I'm I'm really pleased to be working with Seller Tech and and. The, their their clients are really strong, good clients. I think it'll be a good fit for this group. Oh yeah, definitely. I'd love to help out networking too. If I can, if I can point anybody in the right direction as well with with anything they need. But I'm excited to learn more about what you guys do as well. Thank you, Pam, for for Thank for you. inviting him. That was yeah. I know he's awesome. He's he's on the ball, and we we all need people. You know, partnering with people who are on the ball and absolutely you know, a lot of so energy much to do these days. <laughs> So I, I think mm -hmm. he'll be an asset, and, and thank you for joining, Tyler, and thank y'all for having me. Absolutely, it's good to be here. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's move on to Terry Ark. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, by a show of hands, can you all tell me if you've ever been out to a restaurant and ordered a drink in the evening? Nope. Anybody? Not one drink, nope. I'm sorry, restaurant or bar? Okay. Yeah. Raise your hand, Mahal. <laughs> so, how many of you that have raised your hand love to have a watered down drink? Right. I don't see hands anymore. So, what we what our industry has, and this has been around for a while, are these ice cubes that don't water down. So, um, here's a thought: Imagine you're in a restaurant. The lighting is light, is, is very low. And you see somebody with one of these in their drink. Aren't you going to ask the people that work in the restaurant what that drink is? You can have your drink of the night and have it go all, have, have everyone in the restaurant know about it. Good I'm, Terry, most, <laughs> I'm Terry with uh, Creative Business Impressions. I'm in Boca Raton. And um, my phone number is 561-308-1393. I can help you create any type of item with your logo. So Terry, Are you're you trying to get us all legally like lit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about like an ice, like a fake ice cube with their yeah. name on it? Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Now yeah. in oh, that's an idea. Yeah, it's been in the industry for a while. It's great when you don't want to have your drinks watered down. I, 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 swallowed, I swallowed one of those and it got stuck on red and traffic was stopping everywhere I went. Oh, that's a big <laughs> ice. Was behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, do you freeze it? It's, it's frozen? Yes. yes, they are frozen. And then um, what you can do, one of my thoughts were either 
you can price your drink high enough to cover the cost of these, or if they turn it in, then they can get, you know, another drink or something. You know, you can build your build your uh, drink uh, yeah. bar. Yeah, make it a promo. Yeah, right. And you have, I'm assuming you have to wash them. Uh, how do oh, you yeah. Them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or do you, right. And how do you turn them on, too? I'm sorry? I was going to say also how, besides washing them, um, how do like dishwasher or then uh, opposed to that, how do you turn them on? Like, how do you turn them on? How do you stop them? Like you have to reach in. Shake it. I think. Yeah. There we go. Hold on. Oh, hey. The look at that. The and there's and someone would have their name on that. Yes, they can. Oh my gosh. That's great. Yeah. You know, you know what? Is. Every single person yeah. should have one of those and take it everywhere they go. I mean, how many orders could you get? Probably, I'm I'm willing to do it. <laughs> you don't go anywhere. I'd go to the liquor manufacturers, have them put put their logo. There on. you so, go, exactly. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good way. To do it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it at a few bars out in uh, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> don't give it to Mulholland. You'll never see it again. Right. <laughs> put school but colors this, on this, this would be a giveaway for the liquor companies they'd give it to the restaurants like they give everything else the restaurant right. I, I i doubt the restaurants spend a lot of money to put their logo on this put and buy the, these in any type of quantity but if they're getting them for for nothing with bacardi on it or you know crown <laughs> royal that, that that i'd approach them if i were you that that's what i would do right. thank you okay let's uh anybody else have any thoughts on that? If not, we'll go to John McCabe. Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome aboard, uh, you new newcomers. I'm John McCabe. I'm with Carpet Johnny. We're a large manufacturer of frozen dessert equipment and pastry equipment. We're uh, located in the United States in North Carolina, where, where we're starting to manufacture several different pieces. I work with everybody from entrepreneurs up to large uh, chains like Costco and Disney. And we do go to market by training. Uh, we have classes in, uh, you know, in Chicago, High Point, North Carolina. Soon we'll have one in Miami in Spanish. And of course, in Bologna, Italy, where our headquarters is. Uh, I look forward to working with you in the future. If you're looking to develop a frozen dessert program or need some, some help with your pastry program, I can be reached at 401-368-6406 or John M at carpajani-usa.com. We're part of Ollie Group and we look forward to working with you. Have a great day. Thanks, John. Let's go to Jeff and Josh. And the big guy, Josh and the, the range of the operation back there. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jeff Krantz. I'm with Cocart CPS Processing. We're in the electronic transaction business. If there's any way that you need to get paid, we can put together a, 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 a line of uh, information people that can help you get all of your money at, at the time that you need it. Uh, we work with every single major processor of electronic transactions, and uh, we probably get them the best pricing. We've been in business for over 40 years. Um, our organization has been working with for subvert the people like First Data, Thesis, and uh, the such since the beginning. Um, the, we have the expertise that's very, very few companies have because we've been in business so long. But more importantly, we've made contractual agreements with some of the biggest processors and have the lowest costs. None of the other processors can even compete with us based on the fact that we've been with them in the beginning, signed contracts, and they can't renew, can't they can't get out of the con contractual agreements that they've been with us. Uh, we work with anybody. We work with for ice cream carts all the way up to the largest restaurants in the United States. We have offices all over the country, and our main offices are in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, my name is Jeff Krantz. This is Josh Krantz. And we're available for anybody here to, to work with. Uh, it doesn't cost any money to talk to us. It only costs money if you work with us. <laughs> <laughs> or if we go to lunch. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, well. Or if we go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. 
<laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Pam, you still with us? She's there. She's got herself muted. Yeah. Josh. Josh. And so does Randy. Check your check your chat line, Josh. Uh, well, let's go to R Randy. Good morning, everybody. Oh, no. Randy from Prudis here with Heartland Payroll and HR Solutions. John Zaza, great you to see you. You scallywag, what are you doing? <laughs> I I live in Delray. I live in Delray. Uh, John and I go. John and I go about ten years back from when Heartland when I came down for the uh, the payroll the payroll. Uh, business development for the FRLA. So great to see you, my friend. Yeah, let's get together. Um, we're, we're local. Let's yes. do it. Yeah. Yes, sir. So Heartland Payroll, we do everything from new startups, uh, multi-IDs, acquisitions from one person up to five, 600 in the payroll space. That includes the applicant tracking and onboarding. So it's all built in within the software. Uh, just returned back from the FAIA, which is the flagship for Big Eye Insurance and was able to actually make the travel out to go see John Bunn and his facility. What a great business. Um, working working on some opportunities with John, bringing him into some of my franchise groups. Um, the history there is amazing. So John, I appreciate the time on that. It was, uh, it was very eye-opening and uh, great to learn about that. So uh, again, Randy Pomputis with Heartland Payroll. I'm at 585-622-2993. Okay, thank you. TR and Terry. No, 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 no. Um, we're going back to Pam. I just got an email from Pam saying she was just trying to clear her throat. <laughs> uh, she's on Pam, mute, please? she's on mute. I know. That's what I got to tell her. Hang on. I want her to talk. Pam, you are on mute. Please <laughs> talk. <laughs> okay. She's got that ice cube stuck in her throat. <laughs> it keeps well, blinking. While she does that, Terry, <laughs> do, do, do your intro. Um, well, it's hard to follow all of these uh, professionals, but I'll give it my best shot uh, in, in a timely manner. How's that? Um, what I do is I handle the new opening leads reports that you get monthly. Many people here do get them. We are second to none anywhere in the United States. We provide anywhere between 60, well, any, well, 50, 60, we had, we've had 70 leads. I told the team 70 leads a month is the goal. And we've managed to get 70 uh, leads. Um, so every month you're getting the name of a new place that's under construction or opening. Um, the owner's name, the phone number, the email address, the address, whether they have a bar, whether they have a patio, Many times the square footage, like there's a lot of indoor malls opening up and the indoor malls are massive. Um, <clears throat> and they're like three stories. Um, I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt you. Pam just said she's not calling back. She's not on mute. Howard, do something. Anyways, so I will, um, anyway, those go out by the ninth or 10th of each month. We have, a ton of them. Anybody that wants to see a sample, please email me and I will send it to you. Terry, T-E-R-R-I at T-R-N-U-S-A dot com. Okay. Did I miss anybody? I am calling back in. I am not on mute. Okay. Well, uh, maybe she's trying to re reconnect. Yeah, here she comes. Hold on. No, oh, that's Michael. Yeah. It's Michael again. Michael, All right. right, we'll wait for Pam to come back on. But in the meantime, yeah, yeah, wait for Pam because in the meantime, I'm Howard Appel. I'm the founder and publisher of today's Restaurant News since 1996. So we provide digital marketing in our newspaper, email blast, video email marketing, 
And as Terry said, we do the restaurant leads report. And I, I encourage, you know, everybody on this group and anybody who may be listening to at least give us a shout and talk to us about some of the programs we can put together for you. We're so so reasonably priced that if you make one sale for the year, you'll cover your, your cost. Uh, it's it's uh, something that everybody should consider. And it's good for you. It's good for you, good for your business. Um, can I can I can I just jump in and say something about that for a minute? Sure. So I've been involved with you and Terry and Randy just validated that about 10 years now, I've had multiple clients I've worked with kitchen, like I said in my intro introduction, why you would not want to be on these, these not only the lead, leads list, but on the email blast survey, it was just, we just negotiated a three month program with uh, T was set with, uh, with Howard and, and Terry for an email blast. I don't understand new up and coming new new openings under construction i don't understand why everybody on this call would not be and want to take advantage of it it is maybe they'll wake maybe howard and terry will wake up one day and realize they're charging not charging enough hopefully they won't but that <laughs> I, no i just want to give that endorsement no I, you're right you're right because i shake, I shake my head every how... time howard and i talk why you would not do anybody wouldn't do this is beyond me in this industry and then okay that's uh that's all I have to say about that, Forrest Gump. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Yeah. And people uh, say it can't be good at that price. And when I send them the, the uh, samples, they go they go crazy and they buy it, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Thank I wanna... you for that. So this, Thank this you. is Pamela. Can you Pam, you back? Yes. Hey, Pam. Okay. I, I was I was here here all along. I was never on mute, but I, I could hear y'all saying I was on mute, but I wasn't. So I just dialed back in. So you can okay, hear me good, now. Good, good, All right, yeah. tell us, tell us yeah. who you are, Pam, what you do. So I'm Pamela Hewitt, and I'm with Navitas Credit, and we finance equipment um, for all business types, as well as working capital. Um, I had my own company and was a broker for over 15 years as well. So I help my clients with AR financing, FBA loans, and, and a lot of other things through referrals to companies that I've worked with in the past. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely an asset to any vendors. I know um, initially on the call, um, we uh, had a new gentleman, I think Michael uh, Jacobs, who sells restaurant equipment. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a great asset as another sales tool for you with our programs and marketing. We also pay out a profit center on all deals funded. We've been doing a lot of work with Carpe Gianni, thanks to John McKay. They're a great company, highest rated for the products they have. And um, I have you. over 20 years experience. So uh, yeah, John, your, your products uh, are just phenomenal. I love financing them. So um, I just really make, with the banks becoming tighter and tighter and credit lines tying up, you're going to start see I'm already hearing businesses are slowing down and one way to overcome that is to make sure that on your website on your proposals everything that you pass out there's something that says we offer payments or we offer financing just so the decision makes sometimes you've got you know one person you're talking to maybe runs a facility but the decision maker is someone else you always want them to know that, that there is financing available. And I, I think more and more, you know, those of you that are selling in any market, you're going to find that you're going to, more of these companies are going to need, need financing or they're not going to buy. So I, I'm a great asset for that. So I'll be reaching out again to everyone. I'm, I'm working on some marketing flyers for a few of y'all and uh, just, just use me as an asset. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you being here. Uh, I want to double back to some to the new people so they can add and, and also give us how they can be reached. So, Michael, why don't you uh, add anything that you might not have put in and tell us how to, we can reach you? Sure. My phone number is 917-322-9733. My website is express-kitchquip.com. Kitchquip is like kitchen and equipment. So express-kitchquip.com. Um, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I sell tables, shelves, sinks, cook.
I think that's it for now, but we all working together. So I look forward to working okay. on that relationship. All right, thank you. Thank, thanks for being here. Uh, Tyler, you want to double back and t tell us anything else and give us Yeah, I think I, I, mean, missed, yes. I missed I lost everybody. Is everybody there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tyler, I, I'm sorry. You want to uh, double back and just if you forgot anything and if you'd like to add your phone number or email address so we can contact you. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to leave it right now. And uh, uh, I was on LinkedIn if anybody wants to uh, chat. Um, I love to learn more about your business as well. Uh, see if we can provide any value to each other. I'm young, by the way, so I have a lot of energy. So you use me for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Good. you, because I don't have any energy. Yeah, I you do, Pam. Pam, you have tons of energy. I wish I had yours. I've been faking it, trust me. <laughs> and Mr. Zaza, any, oh wait, let, uh, Tyler, how can we reach you? Did you get the contact information? Yeah, I'm putting that, I just put down my number right there. And I'm also going to put down my, my email, my LinkedIn. Well, just tell us because we, we're, video, oh. we're, we're recording this and we want uh, okay. people out in the industry to see it. Sure. Yeah. So, so you can reach me. Um, I'd love. To three three zero six zero nine one six. My email is a little iffy. I put it in the chat, but it is uh, Tyler T Y L E R dot Overmeyer O V as in Victor E R M I E R at Celeritech. So it's C E L E R I T E C H dot biz. And uh, if you look at, if you look up me on uh, LinkedIn or Google, I'm one of the first LinkedIn's that pops up. I'm with Celeritech and we're the SAP business one food and beverage uh, main partner in the United States. So no, that was a mouthful, but okay, I'd love, great. To, I'd love to be contact with you guys. Welcome. And Mr. Zaza, do you want to just, uh, how can we reach you? Uh, cell number is uh, 561-633-8013, 561-633-8013. I'll give you my Gmail uh, email address. Um, it's John, J-O-H-N, and the letter Z for zebra. So John Z 3690 at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left uh, be before we have to leave. And I just want to, I want to, Double back to our lunch meeting yesterday. Uh, as we said, Josh and and Jeff and, and John Zaza and Sal and I had lunch and we were talking about what Servi can do for a restaurant. And the restaurant that we were in was a, what we call a family style bar and uh, table service. And, you know, we were talking about what it could do. And we thought, all of us thought that the manager uh, should know what, what uh, Sal and John and Jeff do. So we asked for the manager to come over. This, this is, I mean, we were there for quite a while. So she came over, probably thought that something, that we were going to complain about something. Uh, she had that, that look on her face. And she politely rejected what Sal was telling her. And after she left. She was the owner. She, she was the owner. Yeah, I know. She gave us the card and I looked at a card. She was the, actually the owner. And when she, when she left us at the table, we were all talking about her attitude and what happens to us as salespeople when you come across somebody like that who rejects what you're saying immediately and you're sort of stuck in limbo as to what to say and, and how to convince her to do uh you know to look at what you have 
And, and the same holds true for a restaurant owner or a manager who's got a, a disgruntled customer. You know, when, when they shut down and all they want to do is say what they do. So I thought it would be interesting to, uh, you know, John or Jeff or Josh, if you want to jump in on that, to, uh, what would you do? You know, if that happened again, what would you do? How could you overcome the attitude that we that we faced? There's absolutely nothing you can do when you're dealing with someone that is not open minded. And when you yeah. have a business and you're not open minded, there's only one direction for your business to go. If you're if you're successful without doing anything, and that is downward. She's lucky she's in an area where she's probably the only restaurant that looks good. That's why she's successful. But her attitude, it makes me it makes no sense for anybody to be in business and not have an open mind to anything that's going on without talking to us like she's rejecting everything that we were telling me about. That's the end of my conversation. So I look at it like a lot of time it's timing, catching the person at the right time, and maybe you try again at a later date. Yeah, I think when they're in the middle of their lunch, that's probably not the best time to be approaching them on sales. I agree with this, John. This, and it's this just was, kind of uh, reaching out after this and just saying, you know, didn't this mean to what? bombard you with three of us with products to talk about, but we'd love to get together and see if there's any way we could help you uh, to be more successful in what you're doing. I 100% agree with you as far as the timing goes, but we were, this, this was close to three, this was close to three o'clock and there was nobody in the restaurant but us. Exactly. Ah. Okay, so then I'd like to add something. When I went through my sales training, which was uh, about two years worth of sales training, we were selling, we, I was learning to sell different products and they, the, the theme was for sales in order to be successful at it. <laughs> Features tell, benefits sell. So you can tell them all you want about features, but you have to get them to understand how it's going to benefit them. So if they don't get that within the first couple of minutes, you're, you're lost. Your well, when I, when, yeah. when, 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 a very good point, by the way, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I thought I'd just jump in. So when I was Tyler's age, I was really well, I was very, very well trained. Um, if, if, if the first thing you got to find out, at least what I do is, is there any pain? If there's no pain, yeah. then there's, there's nothing to discuss. Yesterday was a perfect example of, uh, for, go back to the FRLA board meeting, and then we did the, the, the mixer. We had a table at the mixer. We were presenting survey to a number of people. The first thing, if the first thing out of your mouth is negative on looking at this, then then I, I just drop it, and, I'm, and I move on to someone who looks at it. And we had a lot of people look at it and say, geez, I get it. This is great. I'd like to know more about this. I could really use this. this, is, this you know what? This is interesting. That's the type of person I'm going to spend time with. I'm not going to waste my time trying to drag someone through the minefield. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably we're going to step on a few landmines along the way. And again, what the, the way I was trained is if you're having this much problem trying to get the business, how much problem are you going to have when you get the business? Not everybody thinks that way, but I guess it's all attitude. And I, I sell and develop business a, with a very strict attitude on. I'm not... I'm not. You're. I'm. I'm. I'm here to do you a favor. You're not do you a favor. You're not doing me any favor. If you don't want to do this, it's not going to ruin my year. I'm busy. Nice to meet you. And 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 I don't say that, but I come across that way. Because you got to keep control. If you lose control, you lose the sales process. Lose control, lose control Chris, what you what you want to say, Chris? Well, uh, we've only got four minutes. I'll try to keep it short, but I rarely am able to do that. <laughs> My first question is, how many of you guys have been on the other side of the equation and ever tried to run a restaurant? I'm probably the only person on this screen that has ever run a restaurant. So when you talk about timing, if you don't understand the life of the person running a restaurant, there's rarely good time. Howard, three o'clock in the afternoon might sound great to you. You know what's going on in the restaurant at three o'clock in the afternoon? Shift change. I'm trying to finish up the lunch crew, get them off the clock. I got to worry about who's showing up tonight. I've got orders to place. And then some table wants to talk to me about selling me something. Hold on. Along with the 40 phone calls I get every week and, and other sales stuff that I constantly get. 
restaurant managers can't stand dealing with that stuff. So I understand what you're deal. saying. And it doesn't matter if they're the owner of a, a single proprietor restaurant or a general manager of a large corporate restaurant. It's generally the same. You're but, under constant pressure. When's my order coming in? What did I get short of today? I got to find tomato somewhere. I got to run to the grocery store to get cilantro because it didn't show up. Two servers just called in. I got I got to try to get those shifts covered tonight. That's all you're living with. So now, granted, they probably could have been a little bit more polite. They could have been a little bit more open minded. But you know, Howard, when you say timing, timing's tough. The best thing that you know, here's what I when I ran restaurants. I use my host staff to say any salesperson comes in here, get their card, get their phone number, but I am not talking to anybody because I didn't have the time for it. And then I went through and looked at who had something that might be of interest to John Zaza's point. If I'm interested at all in your product, I may decide to call you. So I'm just giving you that perspective as a guy who was on the other side of the equation. So just to right. clarify something, the restaurant operator is it was not easy. Chris, Especially, Chris. And as bad as it was for me when I was doing it 30, 40 years ago, I bet you it's 10 times as bad today because of the ongoing staffing crisis and supply chain issues they still deal with. Jeff, so sorry. Okay, go if ahead. I, if I, if I so, something. So in, in, that, in, in all general, you're absolutely correct. In this particular situation, we were looking to see who we were going to talk to, and she was sitting at the end of the bar, she having, like, like, having a conversation with the bartender. Then she came over to the table, and she was polite in the fact of just saying no right away, but staying there and 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 kind of listening. But what she had the answer no that she was waiting to say, and then after she said all that, she had enough time to explain for twenty minutes uh, the table and all the new the cool features of the table that we were sitting at and all that. So if she didn't have enough time to listen to us and all that, she had enough time to explain the table and all the cool features. Of the okay. table. In, in general, absolutely correct. In this particular situation, she was kind of just waiting to say no. She was, she, if she would have said no, you know, not really interested. It's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the meal, which we already paid for at that point. So it wasn't like trying to get more gotcha. tip money. There's also a lot of restaurants out there. If she treats her customers like that, she was very polite. In location for lunch next time. Yeah, right. It was it, it was very it was very professional. Yeah, she she actually hung in there, and we ended up talking to her for about 10, 15 minutes. She explained why she didn't think she needed survey or the service or the product or the or that that type of uh, uh, service or product. Um, yeah, it, it was, and and it, and we asked her, "You got a couple minutes to talk to us?" She said yes. If she didn't have enough time, she could have said no, but she didn't. She said yes. And the other thing is, Chris, if I'm in your restaurant and I've got five people sitting there, we're spending a hundred dollars, and I ask to see the manager or the owner, like if it was my restaurant, I'd, I'd go over and say hi, thanks for coming here. And we told her this is our first time. Five people, our first time in your restaurant. She was very appreciative of that. So you know what? Uh, yeah. I, hey John, I, I think it goes. We go over and do the table visit and say hi, but it was when I was getting sucked into a sales pitch, <laughs> and I had other stuff that I had to go do that I had to find a way to, to get out of that and get on to running my shift. Yeah, couple yeah, couple comments on both of those. Uh, me, John, I, 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 to she when she came over to the table, she opened up the the process of us approaching her mm -hmm. she asked us what what kind of businesses we we're in and stuff as soon as she did that she opened she up should have been the, open she opened up to the fact that she was we could approach her yeah so you back, know, back, she back to what asked us how how the food was she asked us oh you've been around here really well what's going on what are you doing what kind of businesses you guys mm -hmm. in and then she closed it down when we answered her with it with the remarks that she didn't want to hear Okay, so, way, so I'm going to go back to what John said. What she talking about? Oh, she ha all of her tables are custom made and with uh, tokens of customers that she's had. Like uh, uh, she has a customer that was part of the army and he had a medal. They put the medal inside the table. So okay. little things like that. Yeah. So it wasn't what because there are competing technologies where you can there there's actually uh, 
ordering systems built into the oh, table. Yes. I've seen yes. that. Oh, yeah. before. So, no, okay. No, this was more so like uh, uh, stuff on the walls and yeah. Uh, right. Decoration. Okay. Yeah. It's like Jewish walking into a Flanagan's. You ever yeah. walked into yeah. a Flanagan's? Like Darren, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I, what I was trying to say is I agree with John that some of it is got to do with not having a big enough gap between what you're offering them and where they want to be. Uh, you know, you've got to find that need, that pain point. And apparently what was said didn't find a pain point for, not that you couldn't take the information she gave you and come back with identifying a pain point. And that that's really, I mean, that's, that's the methodology I use in selling. If there's no gap between where they are and where they want to be, there's absolutely zero reason to waste your time. Um, because then then it's a challenge of a sale as opposed to taking opportunities where you truly are helping people and i think going with chris said her time is money to her and you know some of it might just be her downtime that's the, the you know the 30 minutes she had to breathe so who knows but uh, you know if, if that initial conversation didn't find a need for her it you know there was no opportunity if she had a 30 minute, if that was her downtime, if that was me, I'd say this guys, I'm busy right now. Uh, I might want to look at this or readdress it another time. Thanks, but I haven't got time right now. Don't stand yeah, there for 20 minutes. And, tell us, yeah. Yeah. and I was going to, I was actually just going to say too, that you could always ask them if, the, you know, if this is not a good time, you know, when, when is convenient for you? It's a very simple, you know, as far as that goes, but um, yeah, well, I agree with you, John, that if you're not going to give relieve the pain and and you know like you said darren if you're not relieving the pain from and they can't see it within the first you know a few cups minute or whatever then you're not going to get anywhere let me jump in for a minute i'm going to officially end the meeting i'll keep the board open for those of you who want to stick around and talk about this but you know i appreciate everybody coming today uh welcome to the new people we hope to see you back again next week Everybody have a great weekend and uh, give us a call at 561-620-8888 or go to the website at trnusa.com. Take care, everybody.